Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the important uh, toxicological subject that is lithium overdose or lithium toxicity. So, actually, lithium overdose, most of the time, it is lithium overdose due to some reason. But uh, uh, rarely, the toxicity occurs uh, because uh, patient develops uh, uh, toxic features on regular treatment itself, toxic features can occur because the therapeutic index is very, very narrow. So, overdose or toxicity, whatever it is, it all, uh, the clinical manifestations are almost similar. Lithium is mainly used as a psychiatric medication. We all know that lithium is main drug used for major depressive disorders and it also used as a, a, a drug, drug of choice in bipolar disorder. Lithium decreases intracellular inositol, which may be mechanism of mood stabilization. The problem in lithium is it has got a very narrow therapeutic index. Narrow therapeutic index means in that narrow range, it produces all, uh, clean, all uh, effects of the drug. And if it goes slightly higher, it will produce toxicity. If it goes slightly lower, it will not have any effect. That is therapeutic index. Therapeutic index, uh, uh, if it is very narrow, then there is a high chance of uh, uh, toxicity among patients who are taking lithium for a longer period. And there are some agents which can affect the lithium level. The therapeutic index can suddenly go high or low down, uh, go down, depending on the some of the drugs we use. Now, in that most important is first, uh, first uh, column you can see lithium levels can be increased by thiazides, NSAIDs, AC inhibitors, angiotensin 2 receptor antagonist, metronidazole, low sodium diet, dehydration, elderly, renal disease. In that last three things we have to be, last four things we have to be uh, very careful because uh, hyponatremia is one of the prob main problem in elderly individual. Again, lithium is uh, mainly used in elderly individuals with uh, many psychological disorders. Dehydration, very, very common in elderly individual. Uh, elderly, again, elderly individual itself can develop uh, lithium toxicity. Renal disease is another important thing. Whenever there is renal failure, lithium, lithium can accumulate in our body. That produces overdose. And other drugs also uh, uh, we have shown in this chart. Lithium levels can be reduced by various drugs, but that produces a more psychological problem than toxicity. Clinical features of acute toxicity is very important. GI uh, toxicity can present with acute uh, lithium toxicity develops uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. This can be there in many other drugs also. They are not very specific. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, patient will be already de dehydrated and lithium toxicity can further worsen the dehydration that produces renal failure. This renal failure again versus the uh, lithium toxicity. So, it is a vicious cycle. Uh, many complications can develop during uh, dehydration itself. Dehydration can be uh, maybe due to vomiting, diarrhea uh, or uh, uh, like uh, inadequate water intake, whatever it is. Lithium toxicity is very, very common in elderly individual who is having mild renal impairment uh, with uh, dehydration. Now, cardiac problems are very, very important because uh, whenever we uh, treat a patient with uh, who is on lithium, that is very important. Whenever the patient is on lithium, suppose in emergency room, we know that patient is on lithium and they come with vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, always take an ECG. And if ECG, if ECG shows that QT interval prolongation, prolonged QT interval, then that is a sign of lithium toxicity. This patient can develop any type of arrhythmia uh, due to this QTC prolongation. So, we have to be very, very careful. And sometimes uh, cardiac biomarker, bi biomarkers can be elevated, uh, left ventricular uh, failure can be there. Uh, pro BNP can be elevated. So, all these things we have to check. Various types of arrhythmias are known in uh, lithium toxicity. 
this all due to uh, lithium causes hyperkalemia by displacing the intracellular potassium ion. So, that is a major reason for all these uh, arrhythmias and where there are other mechanisms also. Uh, even some patients can develop uh, uh, chronic lithium toxicity and suddenly patient can develop lithium overdose or uh, toxicity because of uh, because we have already seen that it has got a very narrow therapeutic index. So, whatever it is when we are treating a patient who is on lithium always take an ECG and see whether any QTC prolongation is there or not because that will be the earliest finding of uh, uh, lithium toxicity. You can see here the uh, QTC is prolonged in uh, this ECG. So, if QTC is prolonged then patient can develop uh, various types of arrhythmia especially ventricular arrhythmias. So, that is uh, common. Other than that patient can have junctional rhythm, atrial fibrillation, STT wave changes, supraventricular tachycardia, sinus node arrest or blocks. Now, clinical findings in acute toxicity, neurological toxicity is very common. Yeah, neurological findings develop late in the acute lithium poisoning because time is required for the drug to absorb and penetrate the central nervous system. So, they are, uh, they are not an immediate finding. So, uh, so it occurs mainly during uh, long term toxicity and uh, uh, acute on chronic toxicities also uh, you can get a neurological problem. The symptoms are uh, sluggishness, ataxia, confusion, agitation, neuromuscular excitability and uh, coarse tremors, fasciculation, myoclonic jerks. So, all these things are the major clinical finding. So, it is not a feature of acute toxicity even then many patients who are on lithium for a long time and suddenly if uh, there is a sudden uh, fluctuation in the dose or sudden fluctuations uh, in the uh, other other mechanism like patient uh, is recently started on some drugs like AC inhibitors or NSAIDs or dehydrated suddenly they can go to neurological exacerbation of this neurological finding. And rarely these patients can go to seizures, status epilepticus and encephalopathy. Now, chronic toxicity is another important problem. Uh, it, uh, we already discussed that uh, now patients on lithium, very rarely chronic lithium, uh, uh, chronically on lithium patient never, never come to hospital for uh, neurological finding. But an uh, acute on chronic toxicity or a uh, ongoing patients on lithium can have this type of toxicity. Whatever it is we have seen in the previous slide that uh, clinical findings are sluggishness, ataxia, confusion, agitation, neuromuscular excitability, tremors, fasciculation, myoclonic jerks, all these things. And some patients can have seizures uh, and encephalopathy. Now, another important problem is thyroid hypothyroidism. Many patients on lithium present with hypothyroidism. We can see in our ICU uh, patients who are on uh, lithium toxicity or lithium uh, chronically on lithium can come with hypothyroidism. Some patients initially can present with hyperthyroidism also. Many patients have calcium dis disturbances due to secondary hyperparathyroidism. So, these are the common endocrine disorders we see in lithium toxicity in that hypothyroidism is one of the important thing uh, because uh, both lithium uh, lithium is started for hypothyroidism May, many patients uh, are uh, having hypothyroidism pre previously undetected or patient can develop hypothyroidism due to this drug itself now renal toxicity can occur in some patients uh, normally what we see in our clinical practice is patient will have severe vomiting, di diarrhea, dehydration, they develop pre-renal type of renal failure that is a common thing. But one of the important problem of lithium is it can produce nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Di diabetes insipidus clinical feature is patient will be losing large amount of uh, uh, volume through the urine. So, urinary excretion volume is very very high. So, they lose large amount of volume. So, patient will be further dehydrated and further the uh, uh, renal failure will occur and it will uh, produce uh, more uh, lithium toxicity. Now, we can uh, see this slide. We have acute or acute on chronic intoxication, 
chronic intoxication acute in intoxication or acute and chronic is gastrointestinal symptoms nausea vomiting diarrhea cardiac symptoms like ecg changes qtc prolongation various arrhythmias including atrial and ventricle sometimes bradycardia heart block all these things neurological symptoms it's a late uh, syndrome and uh, it is uh, it is a, mostly it is a silent uh, finding most of the patients who are on lithium you can have some movement disorders in them and uh, suddenly it can ag aggravate during acute toxicity it, it can only aggravate chronic intoxication neurological findings are more important they have sluggishness ataxia confusion agitation tremor they look like a parkinsonism patient any, any patient who is on lithium you can observe them they'll be looking like a parkinsonism patient then cardiac symptoms again acute on chronic intoxication can produce uh, qtc prolongation various types of block bradycardia uh, cardiac arrest like that they can have renal symptoms uh, you can have renal failure due to acute on chronic uh, disease uh, patient uh, may be having vomiting diarrhea volume uh, depletion and uh, diabetic insipidus there also patient will be losing large volume of uh, uh, large volume from the uh, body and through the urine now serum concentration of lithium is very very important when you are managing lithium toxicity serum uh, levels are very very important uh, normal serum levels may be this all depends on the lab uh, some lab uh, they may not have this type of uh, ranges they have a different set of ranges but uh, you have to always check the normal value in that lab normally in our lab it is 0.8 and 1.2 milli equivalents per liter and many patients who is having even if the levels are 4 milli equivalents they may not have that much uh, symptoms especially in the neurological area they may not see, show some that much uh, clinical findings or symptoms that we have seen that uh, patients having chronic lithium toxicity initially uh, they can have mild symptoms neurological symptoms and very severe toxicity only they can develop seizures uh, or coma like encephalopathy like that severe symptoms are only seen in very high levels you can see depending on the level it may slightly vary mild symptoms are seen in uh, levels between 1.5 to 2.5 moderate intoxication like confusion agitation delirium tachycardia can be there in levels 2.5 to 3.5 severe intoxication coma seizures hypothermia or or can be seen hyperthermia can be seen if the levels are 3.5 to 4 so that all depends on the uh, patient's uh, uh, history if the patient is uh, on long term lithium uh, therapy sometimes uh, the symptoms can vary but if the patient is recently started on lithium and if he develops lithium toxicity acutely due to some acute problem like acute kidney failure or acute uh, uh, acutely started on some drugs then symptoms can present very rapidly now whenever we treat a patient who is having lithium toxicity in emergency medicine we have to always take care of the airway breathing circulation because they have uh, they can have airway problem because they are elderly obese uh, depressive patients may be on very uh, various uh, antidepressive medications so gcs may be low and lithium toxicity itself can produce low gcs so sometimes we they, we may have to intubate the patient to protect the airway then always take care of the circulation because in circulation we have two important thing one is the rhythm part of the heart other one is the uh, bp uh, rhythm part here the more than hypotension they develop uh, rhythm abnormalities like prolonged qtc uh, ventricular arrhythmias atrial arrhythmias uh, cardiac blocks first degree sorry second degree or third degree heart block so these type of complications we have to take care initially itself Hydration is another important problem here because many patients are developing lithium toxicity due to severe dehydration produced by either diabetes insipidus or uh, due to vomiting, diarrhea, all these things or lithium toxicity itself can produce all these things. Lithium toxicity can produce vo vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration. So volume replacement is very, very important. We have to put two large bar IV cannulas and give IV fluids. We can give uh, uh, normal saline. Uh, normal saline can be given as 30 ml per kg as initial bolus, and depending on the urine output, CVP, we can uh, correct the fluid afterwards. Now, oral uh, activated charcoal. 
that has got no role in gastrointestinal decontamination of lithium toxicity. Whole bowel irrigation with PEG, polyethylene glycol, can be used for lithium toxicity. So, that is very important. PEG is a useful drug to give gastrointestinal decontamination. Sodium polystyrene sulfonate, cakesylate, this is basically it is a drug used in uh, uh, hyperkalemia to prevent absorption of potassium, but here also we, we can use this. It can reduce the lithium concentration. So, we can use this cakesylate or cakesylate is a brand name, but uh, sodium polystyrene sulfonate, polystyrene sulfonate is a drug that is available as, available as chasse. You can give one or two chasses initially itself. Now, lithium is dialysable, so you can dialyze the uh, uh, drug. So, dialysis is the treatment of choice if the patient does not improve with the, your initial management. If the lithium concentration is above 5 milligrams, you can dialyze. Uh, lithium concentration is more than 4 milligrams in patients with renal failure, you can dialyze. If presence of uh, altered behavior, uh, loss of consciousness, seizures or any other life threatening complications, you can uh, dialyze the patient. So, we have discussed about one of the most common uh, drug overdose in psychiatric patients. Uh, many a times this present, this uh, lithium toxicity present as severe vomiting diarrhea. So, any patients who have psychiatric disorders and they are having a feature of Parkinsonism like picture that may be due to the lithium, chronic lithium toxicity. And if they come with severe vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration or recently started on drugs like AC inhibitors, NSAIDs or anything like that, always take an ECG, see the QTC. QTC is very, very important. QTC prolongation can lead to uh, many complications like ventricular arrhythmias or atrial arrhythmias, uh, complete heart block like that, various complications can occur. So, we have to be very careful when we are treating a psychology, psychiatric patient who is on lithium. Uh, patient can develop serious arrhythmias uh, and uh, treatment is mainly uh, supportive therapy and dialysis. There are no specific antidotes for lithium, but uh, uh, always check the investigation like you look for uh, cardiac failure, look for uh, any neurological finding, look for any hypothyroidism. All these things are important during treatment. Thank you.